Hi everyone, it's Roy, welcome back. Um, I'm here with my wife, Anna Maria. She has driven up from Chicago today. And last time we talked with Anna Maria and Michael, they were, she was talking about a hugo culture process on one of our properties that we put a large garden in for, about uh, taking the weeds and yard waste to it to build hugo culture mounds to redirect water and also that they, that they will get planted too in the future. So one of the questions that came up was, how do you construct a hugo culture mound to make it solid enough to take very modest amounts of water on your property? So I thought, well, Anna Maria could answer that for you today and follow up on some of the other processes she's using hugo culture for to develop gardens in the city of Chicago. Go ahead, I'll share Thanks. with us. Thanks, Roy. Uh, so the question was, you know, if, if I have um, some flooding in our backyard, would I be able to use Hugo culture to um, either push it away from the yard or um, would it be able to soak up some of the water? And the answer is yes to both. So what you want to do is make sure that you're building your Hugo culture on contour, meaning that is perpendicular to the slope. So one of the ways you can see that is when it is raining, go out into your yard and see where the water is collecting and from what direction it's coming. So a real Hugo culture is when you dig into the ground um, you know, it can be up to two feet, and then you put all of your carbonaceous um, material. Like so that yes, and the bigger the log. log, the better, because if you look at um, the at wood, dead wood, uh, that's all made out of cellulose, and cellulose is what we use in our sponges. And it helps stabilize the mound. Yep, and stabilization too. exactly, it helps with stabilization and also for every pound of carbon that you put into the ground, it, it will um, absorb 25 pounds, or excuse me, 10 pounds of water. Uh -huh. So that's, that's cool. one way to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can also um, build it so that way, you see, I don't know if you could see this, but they have this little canal, which is what we call a swale, which also takes water away. So between the Hugo culture and building these swales, you can um, direct the water off of your property or even into the Hugo culture. So instead of the water just flowing through the property, mm -hmm. you can kind of guide it through the property at a slower rate. That's right. Which actually benefits your neighbor too. They don't have this, the volume of water comes to them at a slower rate. Yeah. No. Unless you're mean and you put it towards their property. Unless you guide it towards <laughs> their property. <laughs> which you don't want to do. So. That's one way you can use Hugo culture. And then you, so the larger logs, branches, and twigs is your stabilization. And then your organic waste would go on top of that. The weeds you pull, grass clippings, whatever, would go on top of that. Yeah, yeah. So the bigger, the bigger pieces of wood at the bottom, and then you'd put more um, like weeds and things like that in between there. How do you know then when you're sticks. ready to cover it with soil? How do you know the proper size? Before you cover it with earth. That's up to you. That's pretty individual. You want to always uh, put the top layer like a foot of soil and then you can plant right into that. Oh, it's so going to keep away. on coming. That what I would say is right away. You can cover your yard and it will settle too. It will keep oxidizing so it will settle slightly. Mm -hmm. And I know at in Chicago you keep adding weed layers on top of the planted areas too. Yeah. You bring your weeds to that and keep building up there. But there's many ways to mm -hmm go into the future with the hoover culture. You could put a ground layer of plants on there and never add more weeds later. That's right. Um, so in the Hugo culture, it actually goes down by half every year. So if wow. you, like let's say you make a Hugo culture mound that's like four feet high, by next year it'll be two mm. feet. And then in the next couple years, it'll be, it'll just be one almost one. at grade. So. Wow, yeah, that's a continued oxidation. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's not oxidizing into the air. It's oxidizing mm -hmm. into the compost pile. Oh, so that's why you want to plant it, so that it could take mm -hmm. all of that oxidization. And I have to say, before I met Anna Maria, I had no idea this existed. I didn't know. I never <laughs> heard of Huda culture. I always planted into the earth. And I could plant into modestly what people would consider poor soil. And actually, in some sites, the, as a soil, what people would consider poor uh, actually was better for some of the plants I put in because it didn't have high organic matter contents. But until I saw these mounds in Chicago and I met Anna Maria, uh, I, I've never planted into yard waste before. And I have to say it was very successful, some of the plants we used. And I, I learned a lot by seeing what plants could go from high organic soils that were actually uh, got very dry in the summer because they were raised. And then as that settled, the plants adapted to the, I think, the settling of the soil in such a short time. So really, it's a, it's a, it's actually a trial and error too. You, there's a lot of good information, but you have, I think you just build it based on your own 
particular needs. And I'll show you I can patience. Sometimes people won't have patience for things. They just want everything a little sooner than it can be. Yeah, it's not the prettiest thing, I would say, right away. But it is really yeah. highly nutritious for the plants after after yeah. the first year. And what you'll also see is, so in Chicago, because I mentioned that I use this technique in the community gardens in Chicago, all soil in Chicago, is we treat it as though it's contaminated because we implode all the buildings on these lots. Yeah. And on top of it, when it gets constructed as well, a lot of times they'll just put gravel, compact the soil, or compact all that down, and then you have like this much soil to um, plant into. And so what we do is we use this Hugo culture technique. Um, technically, that's at that point, because we're not excavating, it's called Polish berm. So, sorry to keep adding all these different terms, but when you just lay the carbon on top, the wood pieces on top, instead of excavating, that's called a Polish berm. And because it was created by people in Poland. And um, you just would then add all the soil, all the organic material on top, and then you plant into it. What will happen is as it settles down, you do begin to see the roots of the plants, uh, especially shrubs, right? It'll, it'll oxidize down and then you just add more soil on top mm -hmm. of it. And then it, the shrubs get root pruned. It actually causes the shrubs to put their roots deeper into the Hegel culture. And then um, you just keep adding the material on top and they're fine. Mm -hmm. They're fine. It's very, everything is fascinating, isn't it? I keep learning more and more. I, I... I'm, I'm hoping, I joined the 120 year old club, I'll <laughs> explain that to you later, but my goal is to live to 120. I've met some people in Lake Geneva who established that and they were very bright about it. It was basically setting, a, a, it sets your goal, if you set your goal higher, that means you give up less as you get older. So instead of taking a golf cart to get the mail when I'm 82, I'll take the golf cart when I'm 98. <laughs> and so I'll just set higher <laughs> goals. So there's so much to learn and so much to understand. It, we're, we're at such a beginning point in horticulture. I'm very excited about all the opportunities that are still ahead for us. Is there anything you want to add to what? Um, just, just, we have yeah. some more to share later. Yeah, there's yeah, so much there's more that going on. I've learned from you regarding, you know, how do you have permaculture uh, be more palatable for people too? Because a lot of people think permaculture is just this hippie thing or yeah. For poor people, well, we label it's actually everything, for smart we? people. Let's put a label on something so we can either not do it because we want to avoid something, mm -hmm. or we'll give it a label so it's only for that person or that group of people. You know, we, it's just something we can't help do as humans.